Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hope you have settled in. Uh, a very good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining in person and as well as people who have joined in online. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to our uh, 12th edition of Kubernetes User Group Canada, which is the most active Kubernetes and AI meetup that we have. And this is our, our sh short snippet of uh, our presence across the you know, social media, which is growing uh, pretty extensively. Yeah, uh, I would like to go ahead with our agenda for today. We have great sessions lined up. The first topic is from the CTO of Randoli Rajat on building an observability platform using CNCF tools to cover cost, security, and troubleshooting. And the next session is from Spectro Cloud uh, on Next Gen Kate's management workshop uh, by Tim and Dimitri. And I would like to thank our main sponsors, uh, AWS Cloud Native, uh, CNCF, and Cold Cloud. And our event sponsors are AWS and Spectro Cloud. And also would like to thank uh, our organizers and volunteers. So without them, this would have been possible. And yes, if somebody wants to be a speaker, either volunteer or a sponsor, please do join us. Uh, you can reach out to us uh, via LinkedIn as well, or you can just uh, take a scan of these QR codes. And please do follow us. We have a great presence across LinkedIn, Twitter, and Telegram. So please do uh, follow us and keep yourself updated. And thank you. And I would like to hand it over to uh, Rajit from Randoli. Thank you. Hi, thanks. I need uh, help to host this talk. Yeah, yeah, I believe so, right? Yeah. This one is yeah. I need a USB. It's not USB. The HDMI. Yes. I think I can use this directly, right? Is it okay? I'm being serious. Do I have to join the meetup or? No, I don't actually. Because otherwise the recording won't work, right? Right. Right. Uh, let All right. Thank you, everybody. Can everyone hear me? Thumbs up. Fantastic. Anyways, my name is Tim. I'm country man. You can tell I'm in sales. I'm not the technical guy, so apologies. Um, so the goal today is to talk to you about how we're helping bring Kubernetes management to the next generation in terms of how you would uh, access your clusters, how you manage your clusters, how you provide level two or day two operations of your clusters and so forth. So I'm gonna take maybe three minutes 
I know you're not here to see me. We're going to take some time to walk through the UI and show you what I'm going to talk to you about today. But I'm assuming most folks know what uh, a cluster is and what Kubernetes is if you're at a Kubernetes uh, user group. But just to be clear, what makes uh, Spectral Cloud special and what allows us to help organizations manage Kubernetes at scale it, are these four key differentiators. So when you think about Kubernetes management today, you're thinking about tools like EKS, AKS, Red Hat, Rancher, et cetera. We've taken what they, what they do and we've put it on the next level. And this is how we do it. So number one is distributed architecture. So when you think about how you manage your clusters today, you've the, the typical architecture today is you've got um, a management server, and then you've got additional servers attached to each where each cluster exists. So sometimes you're managing as many as hundreds, hundreds of these management servers in order to manage your Kubernetes clusters. What we've done is we've taken that layer out. So you've got one single management server, and it will talk to every single cluster, no matter where they exist, whether it's air gapped, it's at the edge, it lives in a cloud, any cloud, there's no, there's nothing, whether it's Tencent, AKS, or um, Azure, GCP, et cetera, doesn't matter, or if it's on bare metal, or if it's in VMware, we can see every single one of your Kubernetes cluster in a single place. Number two is we've taken the idea of what a cluster is and expanded that. So when you talk to Rancher or, or AKS, et cetera, their idea of a cluster is that first four layers, your OS, your Kubernetes distribution, CNI, CSI. Everything over that is what you call an add-on. And companies are typically leveraging tools like Ansible, Terraform, and so forth in order to manage that add-on layer. You do not need to do that with us today. You can still integrate your Terraform code. You can still store what a cluster looks like as YAML and save it in a Git repository or in an IDP. But that allows you to bridge the gap in between your application teams and your infrastructure teams. And that today is a chasm that is massive. It takes uh, developers typically uh, hours to days to get a cluster built. With what this looks like, we allow you to do that in hours. And it really, it, I say hours, but it's, it's minutes. It's as long as it takes for you to provision the hardware to support what that cluster looks like. And that cluster can be stored from OS all the way to the application layer as a golden image. You can break that, that cluster profile up into sections. So if you want to have a cluster profile for that first four layers for each of the clouds that you're supporting, or if you've got a specific OS, uh, Kubernetes distribution, CNI, CSI for your edge environments, you can store that as a cluster and you can store the add-on as a cluster as well. And you can bring the two together or you can keep them separate, but that allows you to reduce the amount of time you're spending in Terraform um, and Ansible and other infrastructure as code tools to manage these environments drastically. Customers are reducing the amount of time that they're spending there by 90, 95%. Dimitri will show you what that looks like. Long story short, though, is it also does things like consistency checks and compatibility checks and reduces the amount of drift that you're going to have in your clusters as well. And that brings me to point three. Now, again, um, day two operations is a, a massive component of how you manage your clusters today. Most companies require you to have a second or a third tool in order to get the idea of a FinOps. How much are my clusters costing me? Where do they cost money? How come they, you know, are, am I spending cloud resources, et cetera? Am I over-provisioned? Am I under-provisioned? We're gonna give you that in, in our platform with, a, with our multi-cluster uh, uh, visibility. We also, like I talked to you before, that can be stored in an AP, like as in an IDP. It can be stored as a Git in your Git repo as you wish. So your developer is going to have a much better experience now getting their cluster back or getting being able to provision a cluster or understand what's happening in their cluster without the idea of having to be a Kubernetes expert. Second of all, I talked to you about how we control the drift control, but we also have things like backup built into our platform. So we're built on uh, CAPI, so Cluster API. Most of you are probably familiar with that. So we're leveraging a lot of the other CNCF projects, such as Valero, from a backup perspective. Valero sits in our platform. So we are backing up what that cluster is supposed to look like from OS to application and providing security and governance on it. But if that, something does happen to that cluster, it goes down. We automate the deprecation of the cluster, the moving over of the all of the information from the OS to the application to your new cluster without any manual intervention. So the idea of getting a phone call at two o'clock in the morning from a network guy going saying, I think it's a network problem and the storage guy's like, no, it's a storage problem, that's gone. It doesn't matter. We deprecate the old one, we move it over to the new one, we set, we we tie into tools like Slack. Teams, Jira, et cetera, Confluence. So we set the alerting. We also will log a ticket into your ITSM tool if you have an ITSM tool. So you have a full audit trail of everything that's happened, but the manual intervention is gone. 
And then last but not least, because we have the idea of a distributed data architecture, it allows you to really have a decentralized policy uh, enforcement um, engine. That's a big reason why organizations are using uh, management servers to control their, their, their nodes no matter where they, where they exist so they can have local policy enforcement. Because we have the distributed architecture, it allows us all to have a de also have a decentralized policy uh, engine that allows you to enforce policy no matter where your clusters exist. So that's really how we're taking you know, Kubernetes management to the next level. But like we've you know, done this with companies like CGI, with T-Mobile, with Merck, um, and again, reduce the amount of time they're spending managing these clusters and really giving them true scalability. So, um, you know, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But Dimitri's here to walk you through this. I promised you only a few minutes. So that's my few minutes, but that, that's how we're taking uh, Kubernetes management, adding, bringing it to the next generation. Questions? Good. Thanks, Steve. So hi everyone, Dimitri here. I'm a SAS, so solution architect working for Spectra Cloud. I've been in this industry for about 10 years, so doing predominant Kubernetes. I'm going to be talking here for about probably around half an hour. I will show, I will illustrate how we approach within Spectra Cloud all the points team of what was talking about, and we'll probably leave around 10, 15 minutes at the end for questions. Is it all visible, readable? So can you read at the back row of everything, like font size, the good, bad, make it bigger, so all fine? Yeah. Yep. Thank you. That's why I can't remove that. So. I can remove that. So anyway, that's, that's a platform I'm going to be talking about, however, this talk is not specifically about any platform. This talk is just about how to manage Kubernetes in general, how to go further from the classical approaches, which were previously in use in the previous Kubernetes system management, just to, for me to get a rough idea of uh, what's what's a technical level. Can I ask you to raise your hands if you manage Kubernetes today, please? And that's probably around. So a uh, second question out of three, how, Steve, can you please raise your hands if you use Terraform? to manage Kubernetes, still the same. All right, fine. And the last question is, do you use cross-plane today? Something just to manage? Yeah, not that many. Fine, thank you. So that's for me just to get a rough idea of what's the level of how, what do we do today? Like all of us in this room, what do we spend our time on and how, how do we make it efficient, right? So what I'm showing you here is one single pane of glass consists in many clusters, right? You could probably recognize by this uh, uh, icons in here because Google cluster, IKS cluster, and EKS cluster, right? So like I told you here, we are in Amazon office today, so I'll be showing you the examples in Amazon, but within Spectra, we try to stay agnostic and we can manage Amazon, we can manage Azure, we could manage Google, we could manage on-premises clusters, sometimes running on vSphere, sometimes running on something else, and we could also manage Edge, right? So when we say edge, we mean just a lot of small devices, maybe Intel Nook, Raspberry Pi, anything like that, redistributed across locations. So what's common for all this infrastructure for EKS, AKS, GKE, for the edge is that Kubernetes function is exactly the same way, right? So if you start your Kubernetes, if you manage your cluster, upgrade your cluster, it should behave in the same way. The devil's in the, de in the details, right? So when you start launching the clusters, when you start upgrading the clusters, when you control, if let's say you can start your managing one cluster just by hand, run, write your own shell script, kubectl, kubeconfig, it's suitable. When you start managing more clusters, which can be half dozen, dozen, two dozens, it starts to become difficult, right? You have to control that, you have to manage HA, you have to install day two operations. By day two operations, I mean installation of open uh, and various software on top of your Kubernetes, right? Because chances are you don't install Kubernetes for the sake of it, you install it to run some application stack. So you maybe Prometheus, Grafana, Istio, it can be whatever, whatever applications you were installing on, right? Maybe in Helmshare or something else. So the idea of the idea of next, next management, next level, next generation management Kubernetes is that it should be agnostic of infrastructure, right? So here I'm showing you how to build clusters and how these clusters I built this morning. 
and I build them from cluster profiles. So the first idea, like the approach, you should be agnostic, right? So it should be able to run on any cloud provider. It should be able to run. I think it records. Should be able to run any cloud provider. Should be running on on vSphere, Mass, OpenStack, uh, Edge, whatever you have, right? So that you should have one single pane class to monitor and manage and patch your whole Kubernetes clusters. Doesn't matter whether they run, right? Now, Tim briefly mentioned cluster profiles. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about what we designed it, but then again, approach still stays the same. Right? So if you are doing something, it's better to do it on open standards. We built our tool on the open standard, which is called Cluster API. So if you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to read about it just because, well, it's useful in any case. You can't go wrong. It's, it seems like community has adopted it, right? So there is no company behind it. So we, at Spectro, we take this solution as an engine and we expand it. We add added value by expanding it from just operating system, network storage to applications. So let me go to some of the examples. This is an example of AKS, examples of EKS and GE will look exactly the same, right? So what we do, we define a cluster profile. Behind the scenes is just YAML, right? So it's just a definition of how we want our cluster to look like. So think of any infrastructure as a code language, can be Ansible, Terraform, Puppet, Chef, uh, Salt, whatever you like, just think of it for Kubernetes. So we describe how your end result cluster is going to look like. In this case, we just define it in Padded and we call it a profile for EKS. Like I told you, the profile for AKS, EKS and GKE will look very similar. Inside, behind, behind the, the scenes is going to be slightly different because we hit different cloud APIs. But from your user point of view, you can call and you can create a new cluster using the same approach. Now, what I'm showing you here today is just the UI of this tool. Obviously, when you're embedding it in your processes in infrastructure, you probably use Terraform or Crossplane or REST API if you wish to automate that, right? So this is the first thing, how to define a profile for a cluster. So I'm briefly showing you an example how to deploy it on three different cloud providers. Now, the value doesn't really come from that. So you can today go on EKS and deploy a new cluster and upgrade it without any tool, be it Lattice or any other tool, right? You just log in, you have, you have your credentials, you deploy a new cluster, you upgrade the cluster, you don't need a tool for that. Now, where value comes from is from application stack, right? So it's from where what you're going to do with your cluster later. Now, here I'm having one application stack profile where I just put some of the applications that typically install our Kubernetes clusters. Now in here, you can see that the, this cluster, this profile is in the use of in three different clusters. Okay, this profile is going to apply to EKS, AKS, and GE. So this is where the value comes from. So you, as a person managing or responsible for the whole state, you can define your applications and you could apply them independently of them by infrastructure. Can be Google today, can be Amazon tomorrow, can be easier for my migration from easier or for any other fairness of to the cloud, or it can be migration the other way around by application from cloud. It's all depends. So the value is that if you are responsible for managing sets of applications, be it for security, for compliance, for just your developers, you can define it once, and then you could apply to any set of Kubernetes clusters. Doesn't matter where they are. Now that's that's the first step. So that's the definition of profiles for for uh, platforms. Now, let me go slightly into details, right? So what I'm showing you here is a number of clusters I've pre-created. Again, I pre-created them just because here we only have like an hour for all together. Sometimes cloud providers take about 20 minutes. So I didn't provision them right now. I pre-provisioned the clusters, but you also have an option to test it, right, if, if you want to. Now, the deployment itself of clusters is pretty quick, right? But Again, what I'm showing you here is UI just because we are humans. When you'll be willing to construct, uh, automate it and put it into an automated way, you'd need to have some tool. 
Now, what we are seeing today is Terraform still sort of standard. So probably a third of you raise your hands just saying that you know you're using Terraform, and that's fine. You know, we all like Terraform, it's an open source tool from HashiCorp. Trouble is HashiCorp was acquired by ABM, so we don't really know what the future product is going to look like. So therefore, what we are trying to do is just we, we believe in open source, we believe in open systems, but we're also trying to stay agnostic from any solution, be it, be it Google, be it Amazon, be it HashiCorp, be it anything. So therefore, the platform, in our case, it's Palette, should be able to should be manageable by open source standards that are not going to disappear, right? Maybe REST API, maybe, maybe cross-plane at this point, but you should definitely have an alternative. Now, here I'm showing an example of about eight, yeah, eight clusters. The one is on premises, which I just generated three cloud providers on KS, IKS, and GKE, and also four edge clusters. Now, for edge, we offer the same set of tooling, right? So if you look within the cluster, you'll see, well, maybe you won't see it here because of the screen. Yes. It's the same set of profiles, right? So the definition will be slightly different because we are defining for edge, including the generation of ISO files and everything else. So the process of installing an edge device would be slightly different from installing a cloud provider, but nevertheless, the management, the end result management for you is going to work exactly the same. So you'll see the, the edge clusters in your screen exactly in the same way as you see cloud providers, right? Or cloud clusters running on Amazon. So you could see here, let's say for the cluster running on EKS, you have the bottom four profiles specifically for Amazon and then application set that we defined in the previous uh, profile. Okay, is there any questions up to now? Sure. Yes, it is possible. So just to repeat for everyone on Zoom, maybe the question was, is it possible to report the clusters? Yes, it is possible. You see there is a button here, which will probably hit by my Zoom, sorry. So you can, you can import clusters. Now, we always try to collaborate and discuss with the potential like, clients or whoever is going to use the platform, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the target for that, right? So yes, we could import in here and many platforms today can import any CNCF compatible cluster. Doesn't matter whether it was produced manually using Rancher, using EKS, or anything else. The question is going to be how do we want to manage that one cluster? Let's say in here we would say we can import an OpenShift cluster. It is possible, however, OpenShift is probably provisioned by something Red Hat based, which means that it was managed by Red Hat. So, do you really want to manage this cluster from the platform? Well, maybe. So, we just need to go into detail. So, to answer your question, yes, it is possible. To import clusters, the practical aspect is going to depend on the use case, right? How are we going to, like, who is going to be responsible for this cluster further down the road? So we could import any cluster and and install the stack I showed you from Ethereum Grafana. By the way, stack I was showing you just this was just an example, right? So if I go to profiles, if I create a new profile, let's say application profile, I'm going to choose this is going to be add-on. And here I'll see the list of things that we offer from Spectrum. So what I'm showing you here, this part, this specific screen is specific to Spectrum. This is what we did. We just took existing Helm charts, we added metadata, we added dependencies, and made, made it slightly easier to be consumed, right? But it doesn't mean that you can't use that open standard. So in here, when I create new profile, you see there are two buttons up here. There's a add new button on the left corner, and there's add Helm chart. So if you still want to stay 100% open source compliant, you don't have to use anything from Spectra. You can just use your own health charts or from Vietnami or whatever you want to write. So you don't have to use anything specific. So anyway, well, this was just back to the point that the application stack I was showing was just an example. You could create many settings. Like it's impossible to monitor everything. I'm not sure if you if you folks know landscape.cncf.io, but if you go there, you'll see there are hundreds of applications, right? It's, it's impossible to manage all of them. That's why I say you can install everything, but I'm just, I can't show you everything here. I just chose something I saw was that was popular. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, is it just something by you, or it's also like hell on the Good question. The question was that these applications aren't customly built by Spectrum, and 
We built some of the applications here. You could recognize some of these. They, they were built like spectral proxy. This is what we did to simplify the within the on-premises deployments. When you have something like private AP addresses, you know, then the ones behind them are not, not RFC 1918. So but you still need to connect to this cluster. This is what we built. But most of this stuff, such as Nginx and MetalLB and everything else, it's just basically community stuff. So we take some of the stuff, we optimize it just to make it easier for consumption. But no, I mean, Kubernetes dashboard has nothing to do with us. Right. Me too, Grafana has nothing to do with us. So, so there is some stuff, yeah. I don't know if you feel like uh, you published the Helm chart process automatically or... Yes, so we here, what, what I'm showing you here is, is, is a pack, right? So these are Helm charts, which we patched a little bit. Again, this is all, it's not hidden. We could show it, we could share it with you. But we could also install normal Helm chart. Now, the value, where the value comes from on this platform or from any other platform that respects the same principles is that we not only install it, we keep it later running. So we keep it synchronized. So you define it in a profile how you want it to be. We install the Kubernetes cluster and then applications on top of it. And then we verify that the application still stays the same as you define it in your profile. Again, think of infrastructure as code, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, whatever you want. Just apply to Kubernetes, including applications. This is the value of the platform, and this is the value that you should be pursuing independently of whether you use this platform or not. But to control applications, so and end result of it is that someone, let's say, an infrastructure group installed the application and then configured it, and then someone from a, let's say from developers or from testing team or from someone else just went and manually and made a change. Let's say remove the state of set or deployment or controller or anything. The tool is going to rectify it. The tool is going to verify it and make sure that the application still stay the same. Sure. Good, good question. So we are, as Tim said at the beginning, we are agnostic, right? So what I'm showing you here is actually running in the cloud. That's actually on Amazon, but that's just because it's fast, right? So it doesn't doesn't have to run it. So behind the scene, but it itself can be configured as a Helm chart. So therefore, it's can be it can be installed on any Kubernetes cluster. Now to run to connect to private clusters, there is a thing which we call which is called PCG. Now uh, I'm assuming you're all reasonably technical in here. Can you raise your hand if you're technical, please? Okay, fine. That's yeah. So just docs.spectracloud.com, right? So you don't have to have an account, anything. You can just go there at any point and just to read about it, all right? So we developed a thing which is called PCG. That's called that's an acronym for Private Cloud Gateway. You write quite often in on-premises deployment and other types of deployments are related to privacy, be it in the cloud or somewhere else. You'd have to install it something private. There are two approaches we practice here. The first is private cloud gateway. Essentially, it's just a virtual machine. You install, let's say you need to manage a, a vSphere, right? You install one virtual machine on your vSphere. This vSphere connects to Palette, can be, which can be installed somewhere at so on premises or in the cloud, doesn't matter. You just need to have outbound IP connectivity. That's quite often allowed. It's just outbound IP connectivity to port 443. That's easy to get. So this virtual machine connects to Palette and then internally manages. That's one thing. The second thing is AirGap. So again, why I'm sharing you with you this resource is just because it's quite easy to go there, go there and read. You don't have to have an account or anything. You just go there and read about it. It's AirGap. This is quite often the case with public sector installations or in those where security is high, like, like security requirements are pretty strict. So we could install pallets as a in a completely air gap scenario that never goes outside. So that's just basically we give you the registry and binary file, you install the tool in a kind of environment that isolated from network and it's never going to be connected to internet. The only thing that is required is for the nodes, be it vSphere or bare metal, is to connect to Pilot itself. Again, it can all be isolated from internet. We give you the binary file which installs the Helm chart, or you could just get the Helm chart if you want to. You install one Kubernetes cluster isolated in air gap environment, and then you get it, everything right in air gap. So there are two approaches. Either it's if there is any connectivity to internet, we could help you with PCG. If there is no connectivity at all, that's also fine. Can be done in air gap scenario. Yeah, please. Thank you. Perfect. Could you explain the process? Uh, what if I have five Kubernetes clusters and uh, a proxy deployment inside? And what if I want to change? 
the configuration for a proxy. How it will look like now I need, for example, now I need to make five commits uh, in different repos. What if I will use your tool? How it will look like? Good question. So how would you change a configuration? Let's say if you have five Kubernetes clusters with HA proxy or any other tool, right? I understand most of so the, the use case we see the most is that the majority of configuration would be identical, but there will be here small modifications here and there. So again, I'm talking here about pilots, but the approach will still stay the same for any product that adheres to, to infrastructure as code principles. So in here, what you would do, you would just create a profile for, and then again, I'm showing you here a big profile. You could just create small profiles because you could, because you can mix and match, right? Well, I don't have HA proxy in here. Let's see if I if, if we have if I could HA. Uh, I don't think we have a stake engine as an example, or or I, I just need to add the Helm chart, but that's not the point. So it's like I, I it's yeah, imagine this would be any, any tool, right? So we have a values in here. So in the profile, now we're getting a bit more technical. So just yeah, let me know what's what's the feedback. For every configuration behind the scenes, there will be a configuration in YAML of this Helm chart or a pack, right? So you have to pass some parameters. Now we pre-configured most of these parameters, but obviously, you know, in real life, you would have to modify it. You would have to modify some of the parameters. Now you see here we have variables. So what's how the difference is going to be if you have five clusters? Let's say you provision these five clusters, or you imported these five clusters. Doesn't matter. Now you need to deploy it. Well, first commit is going to be just to have the Nginx code, everything as it is, right? Now you'd have to define then the profiles. If one if a profile is identical across all the clusters, that's it. It's just one commit. And if you push another version, well, you just create a new version of a profile, you see. So I'm here just in version one zero zero. You create a new version of a profile to adhere to GitOps principles, and then you just make your change and then you send this and then that's it you're just going to send you you make one commit and you send one command to up to send the updates if this is going to be different let's say if you have minor differences you still have to commit those differences but then you need to send one one command to send this update to your your clusters it can be terraform cross plane or sdpi does that give yeah you... but i still need uh, to go inside each profile and update it not this and not necessarily you could export these variables to be somewhere else so it, it, well we could just probably have it like private chat later right so it's like based, based on use case you can describe how to push these variables outside of the tool and then just create one template and then take variables from somewhere else because i expected to see one window all my clusters you know and uh, i see how configuration is applying for each of the clusters i expected to see something like that you can organize something like that. In reality, we found that this is good to see when you're experimenting with a single digit number of clusters. As soon as you cross 2,000, you, you're not going to follow it. But yeah, let's have, let's have a chat. Let's have a private chat later. Okay. Sure. Any more questions? Sure. So how can I integrate inside tool? Let's say, are there to be joint the developer developer? Yes. So, Basically, there are two things how you could mix and match this with uh, CI CD, right? So, these two provisions Kubernetes cluster. So, there are two things how it could work. First, we could install app and CI CD tool on top of uh, Kubernetes cluster, right? So, we have here Argo CD as a pack. You can just install Argo CD on top of Kubernetes. So, now it depends on what, what you want to do. So, if you want to build a company software on the Kubernetes cluster, this is the approach that you need. It can be the other way around. When you call Palette or any other tool from Argo CD, right? In that case, I can't show you much as such, just because it's like this is, I mean, I can show you, but it's going to be quite boring, right? Because when you go in most of this um, UI tool, right? Let's say I'll create an EKS cluster somewhere here. You see, so for, I mean, I didn't go through that just because it's not really relevant to our today's stuff, but for every step that we do, let's say, top, whatever, there is an account. So for every step, there is an API call, right? So you will go slightly further. And the tool is going to give you an API call required to achieve exactly the same action. So if you want to use this 
platform from Argo CD. This is what you use, right? So you will just sketch Argo CD recipe or whatever, whatever it's called today in any sense. It doesn't really matter if it's Argo CD, Flux, or any. So for, from CICD, you can call Argo. So there are two things, right? Either you could call a CICD from a Kubernetes management platform, or you could call it a Kubernetes management platform from CICD if you want to automate a build of your Kubernetes clusters. Later. One more question. Sure. Uh, how the security roles are arranged in those sort of protocols? For example, in my department, I have people who are eligible to get the production of them and turn around to put out. And how I can just restrict, okay, so these people are able to see all clusters for my project, the other team members are not. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, most of us probably suffer with our, our back and SSO and all the corporate rules where it comes to it. So, what I'm showing you up to now is just that, well, I have access to everything. I just got up in account. It's easy, right? So, the tool itself brings an integration with SSO with many providers. So, if I go to tenant settings and SSO, you'll see that there is an option to integrate with SIML or IDC or anything else, right? So that's most of the tool to today. What we also provide on top of that, and what I recommend you look in any tool, is a preset of rules allowing you, if you here you see, see, this is a list of users that I currently have. We also have a list of scrolls, right? So where we have a predefined set of Kubernetes rules allowing you to read, write, or modify, modify or remove the objects within Kubernetes. We also have a concept of project. You see at the top, the, there is a say, project and then the list of our names. So these are projects isolated. Now in this environment, this is just a, our testing playground. We all see projects of each other. But if you want to skip it, I mean, if you want to separate this, you could do that, right? So if I'm a not non-admin user, I'm within my project. I simply won't see any other projects, let alone modify anything within that. So that, that helps to do this separation for those who want to play with it, for those, those who want to control, and for those two who want just to use the platform to create clusters. So this is all embedded. And again, uh, we don't specify on anything like uh, Geeklock or Okta or any AD, Entra ID, how Microsoft calls it today. It's all fine. So the, the solution to me, any solution should respect the standards, which in, in, in this case is SIML and YDC. These standards are not going anywhere. These are just standards. Thanks. Pleasure. Sure. For you, we have the cloud vendors these days. Do they have, they have a, a bunch of add-ons that are supported? Do you have the option to update more or go whenever there's an integration? How does the cloud uh, uh, Sure. So, <clears throat> well, let's put it that way. Now, I'll also update can be a good thing if you always be, want to be on the bleeding edge, but you also want to have some control, right? So what we do, we, we develop here a tool and we support a tool that allows you to control how these updates look like. Now, in, in the details, I mean, we, I'm guessing we could just have a, a look at the details together in, in, for some specific examples, but I'm just going to write answers in general, right? So we manage clusters on any platform, but we also can manage Helm charts. Now, if these specific things are available as Helm chart, that's easy, right? We would just install them and may maintain as they are, right? So we will verify using reconciliation loop that the installation is still there. It's not modified. If this is something specific to provider, then even if it's not available as a Helm chart, we could always modify and launch the installation using just YAML files. Now, that's not as easy just because, well, it's, it's just starting to become slightly more difficult to manage, right? Just because it's like, if you're going to be using this add-on as a long YAML, long list, long YAML file, it's just hard to manage. Now, specific from, from cloud providers, they will be included into the profile to some, associated to some cloud provider. Let's say for Amazon storage, it's going to be EKS storage. Is that the example you're talking about or some something else can you just? Well, uh, it shows the, uh... Yeah. 
Okay. I think I'm getting it. We can, yeah, we can skip the, the, the up, up rates. It's just because whenever you do whatever you do, like it should be one single source of truth, right? So it's like if you don't, you don't want to upgrade parts of your from cloud provider and some part from some other tool because there can be a clash. We could skip on some account charts and just we could skip updates. We could just not touch them whatsoever. I'm guessing the real answer is going to be how you want the overall architecture to look like. So if you're the same managing the vast majority from some tool like Palet, then it's probably better to keep everything there. If you're managing everything from cloud provider and, and let's say EKS version, you, you you prefer to manage it from EKS. Well, that's fine. Also, it's just you would need to sit together and draw a diagram which software is going to be responsible for each version. So I'd say for the, uh, the tools that have been updated, like often yes or no, it's fine. We are not, we are, we are not stick. You can update them from the cloud provider. You can update them, you can update them using us. The main thing is just to keep it reasonable and updated from one place. Okay. One more question. Yeah. Uh, sure. I think that's your, 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 your assistant person. So, so what kind of flexibility we have when we are creating new clusters? For example, if I'm creating an EKS, can I pick Carpenter and Epic Cloud with them in the present target? If I'm doing EKS, can I use virtual mode? All these sorts of configurations? So the answer is in the, it depends, right? So some of the configuration you can, uh, some of the configuration you can't, just because we still have to maintain it. So it's reasonably flexible. We are trying to accommodate everything, but like I told you, if you go to landscape.cncf.io, which is humanly impossible to support everything, right? Now we could go later into details for support with Carpenter and other stuff. We are trying to support the most, everything that is open source, right? At least the vast majority of what, what, what we do. So let's say for the virtual clusters, we did add virtual cluster handling here, just because virtual cluster is agnostic, right? It's just a principle. It's an open source solution from another company, but it will still function exactly the same whether we are using Amazon, we are using Google, we are using anything else. So it's in here. Specific implementations like Carpenter from, from, from Amazon, we could discuss what's what's going to be supported and especially what's the value we are bringing, right? So it's like we could support everything. So it's like you see, if we import a Kubernetes cluster, we're not going to break anything. Now the question is, what's the value of that? So to, I mean, I'm sorry, but the answer is it depends, right? So we support most of the stuff in reality. Well, there is indeed it depends. Sure, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's Yes, so the profiles it is just a definition, right? So what I'm, I mean, here I'm, I'm playing within my project. These are the, my profiles that I created, right? If I go to some, to some of my, to some of my colleagues, you'll see their profiles it will be different. If you go to tenant admin, you'll see all the profiles across our company. So it's like this is a profile created for everything. So that's back to the separation of duties. It's, it's easy in our decision. In our case, it's out of the box, right? You could just create a profile for the whole company, let's say a security profile. One of the things, so we work quite often with financial organizations and one, one of the things they require is an installation of security software everywhere. Again, for us, we don't really care if it's with Aqua Security or anything else, like we just, everything is available as account chart, fine, we are going to work with it. We, we don't prescribe anything. However, the approach still stays the same. All of the clusters must have a security vulnerability software, right? I mean, I mean, you've heard about some of the company last week, right? So some problems <laughs> there. So it, what you could imagine here is that tenant admin, you will have one profile which you mandatory apply across the whole Kubernetes state to install security. And then within projects, every group, be it developers, infrastructure, DevOps, platform engineering, however modern world you call it today, they would use something that they they want to play with today. However, it is mandatory, so everyone in the company has a security scan tool. So that's going to be used by different profiles, like one profile for everyone, and then profiles per, per team or per developer. Like, what about the developer bank that has part of the AWS Ergo and I have slightly different profiles. Yes. Can I create on the tenant level or tenant admin level a profile on the data from not across all my files? 
yes, you can create. So what I'm, I mean, what I was showing up to now is just a profile which can be identically applied. But of course, you could create a, a profile, let's say, application Amazon and just work on Amazon. Yes, of course, it's doable. It's, it's uh, one of the use cases. Yeah, you know, the subset of what I'm showing. Yes, it is possible to create a cluster profile specific for for a cloud provider for Amazon or anything else. Very good question. So that's just for those in Zoom. What happens if today, right? You already have Argo CD and Crossplane and everything. Now we need to see together. So it's like the best practice. We need to define what is available for everything. You could only obviously do this without everything without Spectra. It is possible just to configure and as you said you already did it using Argo CD and Crossplane. Now the difficulty is that it's just the complexity of this solution and especially growth. If you preview that, you, let's say you'll be expanding between one of the cloud providers or today you're using Amazon, but tomorrow your company will buy another company or some company buys yours and you will have to start using it. Then an agnostic solution is going to help. So what we need to identify together is that what are the possible wins, right? So it's like, I'm not a huge fan of replacing a tool that already works just for the sake of it, right? So if it works, if it works, doesn't matter. If, however, if you, if you have it in your mind for the future or some of it, someone in, in your company, has it in, in the roadmap that you have to support another provider that to migrate from on-premises to the cloud or the other way around. Then what we could do, we could kill multiple birds with one stone, right? So back to your question, it will, it's sorry again, it depends. So it's like we could imagine rewriting a little bit of cross-plane. So mostly, let's say with Terraform, I'm confident when you have a lot of codes, we could just reduce it drastically with cross-plane. Most probably we could just reduce the amount of cross-plane and insert some tool. So the cross-plane would be probably managing this tool that manages another uh, the cloud, right? Now the details is that we need to discuss together. Are you staying on Amazon? Are you going to be adding something else? Are you in planning? So we need to ask, I need to ask you more questions to give you a quality like a quality answer, right? So there is no one size fits all how you want to do it. You may see very well, just keep your cross-plane if there is nothing for you. However, if you intend to use Edge, cross-plane is great when we talk about clouds. If on-premises come to the picture, then you probably need some other tool. If you intend to stand in one, just stay in one cloud, maybe your solution is good as it is, it depends on the growth. So we, it's a matter of dialogue. Pleasure. Sure. <laughs> All right, so I have to admit we can we need to look into detail, right? So it's like what I can tell you is that we we publish a a, a guide how to manage it now specific dependencies so it's like right right now i am working on cross plane with the compositions and all this stuff but look specific use case i can't answer you just right now by having one sentence and i'm happy to sit down with you later and just go through that right i mean the, the response right away i don't know we need we need to we need to take a look together what are we trying to cover here so yeah let's talk after that the, 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 Any more questions? Don't chime in. Don't hesitate. This is why you're here from us to exchange information. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So we do support everything in hybrids, which can be like either a cluster running on Amazon and cluster running on prem. You could even do stretched clusters. However, we recommend to take a look together what are we trying to achieve, right? So it's like stretch cluster in even like part of it and somewhere on premises, some part of it somewhere else and the cloud. You can configure all that. But that's that's just you know you can shoot yourself in a book, right? So that's we need to do it together just to go through architecture review and make sure that we could support that because PCD needs to work 
needs to have, I think, less than two millisecond latency, which is in between master nodes. So we could do everything hybrid, but it eventually needs to work, right? So we just try to simplify it and create small clusters. For the architecture on edge, we do support x86 altogether. For ARM, it's per device. We have tested NVIDIA Jets and Nano. We are testing a lot of other devices right now as we speak. I don't think you can mix and match ARM and x86 nodes in one cluster as of today, but we can create one cluster as x86 and one cluster in ARM. I'm not entirely confident. I can back to you, get back to you whether we could support mix with ARM and x86 in one cluster. That's not the use case I've seen. It's normally one small cluster, either x86 or ARM, but it's possible we could just work with you if you need to have a use case to have a use case covered where you have mix and match. Okay. How am I meant to be on time, guys? Is it okay? Again? Ten minutes, right? So any more questions or are you doing here? Sure. Good question. Yeah. So the question is whether we could just take that cluster and just move it. Uh, um, yes and no. So the reality is that we don't do lift and shift. You can't just give it Google credentials. You give it, give it Amazon credentials, press migrate, and this is over to you. No, that's over to you. However, what we can do, there are two things we can do. First, I think Tim briefly mentioned there is a Vedera embedded inside the tool. This is open source tool for backing up Kubernetes cluster. So what you could do is you just back it back up once, one process and restore it to another cluster. Now, the reality has been that you would have to invest a lot of efforts into making this it work. Because in principle, yes, it does work. So you just take it back up, you restore it, it's all good, it's all good. Reality is, however, different because everything needs to everything needs to match for it to work. The AP ranges must match. The broader versions must match. And yes, sort of. Yes, kind of. It does work. It's a pain though. The more the easier approach, I'd say, would be to apply different profiles, right? So if you have a profile now, if you want to. Just take an existing cluster, take a backup, it's just the only way because we can't just discover everything and put it in capital collaboration with cluster API. However, if you're talking an approach where you'd be managing multiple platforms, let's say where you create one cluster on one platform and then another platform, then yes, we could do that. It will still not be, it won't be an old uh, lift and shift, so it won't migrate, but it will, it, we could create, I have two. Cluster profiles, one for Google, one for Amazon, and then create clusters that will be pretty identical. The, deal, the benefit here is that you create a cluster and you will know what the difference is because you will put it inside the platform, right? So that the profile, the YAML file will show. This is where you will put the difference. So you will know the difference. So if you're talking about creating a new set, yes, it's doable like that. If you're talking about existing, there is a better approach, but that's, it, it's Hard mates, yeah. it's a hard one. Yeah, because um, you have a kind of scary approach, say, different cluster from the same other connection. Yes, so if you if you detect, so the platform in, in, in our case today is fine. If it detects any change, we could schedule an action. In our case, it's a webhook. Uh, so with the webhook, you could do pretty much everything. So, Again, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. It's just if, if the target is just to keep the cluster maintained, you don't have to do any action for it. It's automatic. It's out of the box. It will rectify. So if someone manually logs into to the cluster and does a QTT or delete or anything any malicious, we will rectify it. There's no action necessary, right? It's going to be automatic. We will send you an email if you wish. But if you want to do something else, like integrate the platform with something, send a service now request or any other sort of request, yes, it's doable by a web book. But that's out of the box as well. Pleasure. How, uh, how does your solution work with the private uh, reservation? Let's say we call it all new cluster keys, so we build it yep. somewhere. It can be ATR, NAS, tools, filter, public, whatever. How how can it uh, and where your 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 uh, scope 
are stored and managed okay. so we work and we have full list of certifications for the company i believe it's spectrocloud.com slash search or something you can just go there because in, i i'm i'm not maintaining it's it's always changing the, this list of certifications yeah this is like iso 2701 or anything else so we are certified because we work with security a lot now like i mentioned we do work with financials and this is kind of often use case that is there it have to be everything is local we're using local provider local provider registry local container registry you will define a set of registries in here but also bear in mind so this is just a platform right so whatever you do between what whatever you tell it to do so behind the scenes it does configure some of the containers push to some registries but eventually if you're configuring your health charts you'll be pointing to your registry right so we don't specifically intervene in that it's just the platform of managing kubernetes on scale whenever if you'll be doing installation of applications from your private registry you could still do that so we don't we don't manage that right? we don't touch it right so you can configure it the planet itself can be also installed from a private registry so like i told you you can go to air gap and this will be an example where we give you thank you somewhere here if i do look for registry yeah, so we will give you some registry and we will give you everything you need to do to set it up. But if you want to host your own private application on the registry, yeah, that's also that's also doable. We don't intervene in that we we don't mess up when we, we we just give you an option to download this from your home chart, from your YAML code, from anything. Sure. Like all the certificates, they accept some plans. Yeah. So all the add-ons you have you have provided. We make sure that all those add-ons are certified by Pattern by the experience and everything covered. Yes. So for every add-on, you'll see different things, the different ticks in here. So I didn't go into that today a lot. But for the for the add-ons, you'll see you see a green tick. Same for FIPS. So not everything here is certified by by FIPS and FedRAMP, but for those that do, there will be a tick. And there is also a specific installation of pallets called Vertex. So you see that. So um. So everything here is FIPS compliant. Now that's a subset. So we 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 don't verify everything, but we strive to to verify everything, right? So it's it's on the works. It's we verified mostly. But the ones we have is verified. But if you need something for it to be verified, we're happy to work with you. So there is a specific installation for those for those of you who work in the secured environment and the government agencies, especially American ones. Yes, there is FIPS, there is FedRAMP, it's certified. Sure. In conclusion, let's consider a real example. I am the most in lead. I have six engineers that work on my team. What if I will decide to implement your tool? What will change for my team more? Will you provide me five benefits? Uh, maybe some business metrics will improve. We have uh, more capacity for uh, different type of tasks. What will change? What will you change? So we need to sit together, right? It's just to define because most probably it needs to come from you. What do you want to change? We normally we just we win time just because, well, thanks to all that, this is standardization, right? So the discrepancy of the, the the two coming from developers to production, the time will significantly reduce just because they're going to be working in standards, right? Yeah. I was, I was just gonna, I'm gonna add to that. So it's like the business case conversation usually comes through us. Like we obviously work directly with Dimitri. And the technical team, but we have a very clear understanding of you know what are the tasks you need to understand what tasks are you doing today. So we do a, a what like why we do anything just to understand. And then if those if what we offer can align to reducing you know time or improve process or improve security, depending on what your pain is, that is how we would look forward as we move forward. But we're very clear, like if there's no process improvement, no security improvement, and no pain, we don't want your business. Like we're not just gonna sell something for the sake of selling it, but there has to be a good business case associated with it, or else we don't move forward because you'll never get the right to spend the money internally. So it's a waste of your time and a waste of our time. And that's not good for anybody. But we also want to make sure that our reputation is strong. Like we're still only four years old, five years old. Now we have 
amazing customers like T-Mobile and the U.S. federal government and Procter and Gamble and like they're all in with us, like millions and millions of dollars. Like we, we've got the business case because we've got what we're we know what we're doing. We help these companies solve real problems as they're trying to sell Kubernetes. But if it doesn't fit for you, we're not going to do it. We don't want to spend all of our time on the phone solving a problem that didn't exist. Yeah, go to I mean basic basic metrics. Yeah, but like basic metrics are you know how much time are you spending in Terraform? Can we help you rationalize other tools? Like are you using three tools to what we do in one? Right. Mm -hmm. Like when you saw that architecture diagram that I presented at the beginning, how many tools do you use for that? So can we reduce that? Can we help your team become more efficient, reduce risk in terms of security vulnerability or any anything to that effect? And then, you know, once we understand the as is, then we can provide the value on the other side. Cool. Thanks. I think we are approaching the, the end of the allocated time here. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone. We are going to be staying here. So, for the, for the chats, happy to, to be here. Thanks. Thank you. I think have a very insightful session. Uh, so there is a small announcement. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm actually me, and just have a quick update. So we're just starting up a small initiative. It's a kind of called Cube Tools Day. John. So uh, we are bringing in people who work on cloud technologies, Kubernetes, microservices, and uh, Gen AI. So any use case that uh, that we find that we find which is well suited for scaling up, and making your application more much more productive. So um, just try to hop on, and we are just uh, starting off with first event on 14 of us. So just sign up, and uh, it's like three hours event, and you can have like crunch and networking. So please feel feel free. So thanks. Thank you, and uh, I hope you all had a great session uh, learning today. And a uh, small request to keep the conference room clean, so please uh, remove your foot plates. Uh, so that's all for today, and I hope to see you all soon uh, for our next sessions, uh, probably the next month uh, on you know, similar dates. So please uh, look at our LinkedIn page, and uh, you can join us. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Actually, wait, I got a surprise for every one of you. So I don't know if you have noticed or not, uh, it's a 12th meetup. So it's been eventually a year for building communities around Toronto. And we would like to thank everyone, especially Carl from AWS team for supporting us uh, throughout. So yeah, uh, for, for thanks a lot for attending. And I would pick two guys from the from the attendees who were the most active and who uh, listened the conversation throughout. And we are going to give away two uh, subscriptions for uh, Code Cloud. So first I would like to uh, invite this gentleman because uh, th his questions were really uh, very good. Congratulations. And the other guy, the DevOps team lead uh, from somewhere. Yeah, so thank you so much guys. And yeah, for the ones who did not uh, get any giveaway today, we have some Spectro Cloud goodies as well outside. So, yeah, thank you so much for joining, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.